All right, everybody, welcome back. It's another episode of Florida Nye the Science Boy. So uh, today we are going to be learning how to do a black wash on our copper and other finishes. So let's get into it. All right, so I'm recording this by myself. I was supposed to have a helper and I, I do not. So a couple of things that we are gonna need is, <sighs> first off, you're gonna need some of this guy right here. <clears throat> so this is liver of sulfur. And uh, yeah, just please take my word for this and please do this outside like, just just do it outside it, it literally smells like satan showed up at your thanksgiving dinner and um ate all of the deviled eggs and then crapped his pants so that's that's the best explanation i have for how that stuff smells so uh yeah make sure <laughs> make sure that you do this outside or your wife is going to hate you uh second thing not a hundred percent necessary but get you some gloves you don't want this stuff on your hands gonna smell it's gonna make you smell like you work at a rotten egg factory uh, I've got two containers here and one is going to be the liver of sulfur mixture and then you're also gonna need some baking soda and baking soda is gonna neutralize the um, the liver of sulfur after we've gotten the patina that we want so we're gonna go ahead and open these up I'm just gonna go ahead and add some baking soda to this right-sided mixture there really isn't like a definitive how much to add just when you think you've added enough just add a little bit more and then wham bam that one's done don't worry about mixing it or anything crazy like that <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pop open the vial of rotten eggs and we're going to get that ready to go into these two containers now inside of these containers is very simple it's just warm water right out of the faucet. I didn't warm it up. I didn't do anything like that. It's also been sitting for about five minutes while I set up the camera and uh, it's still relatively warm. Doesn't have to be super warm, you know, but you do warm will mix better. So that's why we want warm. So next we're going to take our little, little spoon and I like to do a little bit more than what people are going to tell you to do. I almost fill up the spoon as you can see, put it in here, mix it up. Ah, yes, the smell of Satan's butt cheeks. That's, that's what I smell. And <clears throat> it's gonna turn a nice, glorious pea yellow. And then there we go. That's, that's literally it for the mixtures. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, <clears throat> you can see here, I've got the Ace Beam. This is the something something double A. I can never remember what these are called. If you want, you can go ahead and clean these and get off any, any kind of patina. Siri, stop talking to me. Um, you can get off any kind of patina that you might already have on there. Uh, just, just clean it up. I'm also gonna do this pen. For the pen, I'm just gonna go ahead and take out the refill. <clears throat> just to make sure that, oh, well, I dropped the spring on the ground. Hold on, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just take out the refill. Uh, for the flashlight, I will just go ahead and remove battery. Just get off any unnecessary, get out any unnecessary parts. <clears throat> and then the last thing we're going to do here is I've got one silver, uh, what's a silver dollar? One troy ounce silver. So that's all we're going to do. Uh, these right here, <clears throat> you can kind of use whatever you want. I like the gentle clean scotch Bright pads. You can go get you some quadruple aught uh, Brillo pads. You just want really just to be able to scrape off the high points. You're not really polishing or sanding or anything like that. You're literally just going to <clears throat> scrape off the high points so you can kind of even out your patina that you're gonna get. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll just do the pin first. So just so you can see what this pin looks like before we go ahead and dunk it, and this reaction is super, super fast. So we're gonna go ahead and dunk it. Let it sit for 
I, I, 30 seconds. Um, 30 seconds is usually more than enough, uh, but we'll let it sit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and dunk the coin. You can see the coin here, the kind of finish we have on the coin. <clears throat> go ahead and dunk that. And last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and do my flashlight here. <clears throat> and the key thing to note here is if you're doing a flashlight or anything of that nature, and you start seeing bubbles come out of the creases, your flashlight is not waterproof. Please get it out of the mixture as fast as you possibly can. <laughs> That's bubbles are bad. Okay. Bubbles are bad. So like now we're, we're watching inside this bucket and I don't see the reaction happening super, super fast. I, I tend to like it when the reaction happens a little bit quicker. So what I'll do is just add just a little bit more. <clears throat> The more you add, the faster the reaction has been, has been my, yeah, see now they're immediately turning. So I just didn't have just quite enough in there. <clears throat> I'll go ahead and use my plastics. Okay. So I should have been a little bit smarter than that. The five minutes I was court recording the camera overheated. Uh, I just literally moved to the shade and it's been like one minute. So we're just going to go ahead and pull the stuff out. It's probably done. It literally, this reaction time is a minute. So this is probably, this is probably more than done. So here's the pin. There you go. Black. We're going to go ahead and drop that in the mixture, the baking soda mixture. Here's the flashlight. Black. Drop it in the mixture. And we'll check the coin. Oh, the coin looks cool. So there's the coin, black, kind of. I'm gonna go ahead and close up Satan's butt crack, get that out of the way. All right, and then what I, what I like to do is since I've been dipping my hands in that liver of sulfur, I'm gonna go ahead and take my gloves off and I'll switch to a new set of gloves. You, so you really don't have to use gloves, like it's not, it's not like a requirement, but liver of sulfur is not necessarily toxic, but if you were to drink it or inhale it, or if a kid drank it or anything like that, it's, it'll give you extreme diarrhea. <laughs> There's not a, not a non gross way to, to say that. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our handy dandy little, oh God, my hands are so sweaty out here. It's so hot outside. I think it's like a hundred degrees or something. So we're going to grab our little plastic boon, move this into the camera view. And we're just going to kind of move things around, make sure all the baking, baking soda, baking powder gets on top of the gear, make sure it's neutralized. Wham, bam, that should be good enough. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy just so you can see it one more time. This is the liver of sulfur. This was literally like $8 on Amazon. It's relatively inexpensive. It doesn't cost very much money at all. Um, all right, let's go ahead and get out the first piece. Flashlight. So we've got the flashlight out. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get off this. Wow, it's okay. So here's our, for the most part, finished product for the flashlight anyways. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your little Brillo pad or your scour pad or whatever you've got, and you're just going to kind of run over the flashlight. So it will take a second. This is, there's not a science to this and oh, I almost threw it on the ground. And I do like to use these little scour pads because they're very like non abrasive. And, um, you, you know, you don't want to rub like all your finish off. You got to put a little bit of elbow grease into it. Not much, but we're just going to kind of rub, scrub, scrub a dub. You can see all the black that's coming off on my gloves and my hands. I should have probably took my watch off. And you kind of just keep scrubbing until you get your, you know, your desired finish. You can dunk it back in the water if you want. Totally fine, but you can kind of see the finish we're starting to get. That copper is starting to shine through. 
and you're really just putting the elbow grease onto the high spots. So you want that, you want that patina to stay in the crevices, in the cracks. And what I should do is take off the, the clip, but you know what? I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm gonna leave the clip. It'll stay dark underneath the clip, but whatevs, I don't, I don't really care. You can get as detailed with this as you possibly want. Maybe a little bit more rubbing around the top of the light. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and dunk it. Let me grab a paper towel and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so I went ahead and made the executive decision to get behind the camera. That way I could see more of what's going on. But what we're gonna do now is just kind of rub it down and just kind of see where we're at on this flashlight. Yeah, that looks pretty, that looks pretty sweet. And I haven't really done much at all, to be honest. I haven't, you know, on the LM10, I did a heck of a lot more scrubbing, a um, lot more cleaning. And I used something a little bit more abrasive. This, these are non-abrasive pads. I probably should have went with something a, a little bit different. But if you're just hitting the high points, I mean, you really don't need that abrasive. Check that out. Let's go ahead and wipe her down. Wham, bam. That's how it's looking right now. So it'll look a little bit different once it dries. And uh, like I said, this, I really should have just taken this clip off. Now, <laughs> I can't even get it off. I need like my pocket knife and I didn't even bring one out here. That's ah, okay. I'll take it off a little bit later. But there you can see how it's blackened up. And you can see on the Brillo pad or on this little scour pad that it comes off the more you, the more you scrape. That's really all it is. The whole chemical process, super, super duper easy. All you're doing is just knocking down the finish. And then if you really, if you really wanted to just lock it in, you can really just get um, like some, some clear enamel or anything like that. And you can just spray it, spray it with some clear enamel and then the patina won't rub. Um, your finish will stay exactly the same. I, I haven't had a lot of issues with mine like my, my LM10 that I have, uh, it's been, that's been at least a, at least a week since I did that flashlight. And, uh, I've had zero issues with any kind of like patina rub off or anything like that, but you definitely want to use the scour pad just to knock the patina down. Here you go. You can see this flashlight or this pen, what this pen's looking like. So all we're going to do is take our, our Brillo pad and we're going to wipe her down. When you pick this up too, one of the key things to note is you'll feel it feels kind of, the finish feels almost bubbly. <laughs> so as you're scouring it, you're also smoothing it out. It doesn't cause any, I mean, remember this is all, this is patina is all on the surface. So you're not, you're not doing anything to the metal composition. I mean, really you could polish all of this patina that we're doing off and it would look brand new again. That's important to note. But you're not, you know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna do anything that's gonna hurt this pen. Um, or you see the copper threads on the inside are still good. Um, you're really just doing a, a surface change, to be honest. That's, that's kind of all this is. Just very, very basic, basic chemical stuff. Not a lot to it. I'm just gonna rub the top of this across my pad. All right, let's hit it with paper towel and see where, where she stands. This is the pen that Dan gave me. Customizing it a little bit. Now see, if I grabbed, if I grabbed something a little bit more abrasive, I could really get this thing looking like copper again. And then I would just have the inside lines would just be black. But what the finish I'm going for right now is I'm going for more of just like a black finish, like a, um, I don't know, like a chromatic 
black. Check that out. How cool does that look? This is copper. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is like my new toy. Yeah, see, so check these bad boys out. Hopefully the camera does them justice. They look awesome. Of course, I will, I will go through and just make sure that they're, you know, I'll probably hit it with another Brillo pad or something. Phew. Oh, excuse me. All right. And now as for our coin, I haven't done silver before, so we're going to see how silver turns out. Silver is definitely a lot different than copper when it comes to patinas. <laughs> Check that out. That's cool. I don't know what hitting it with one of these would do. Let's find out. Hmm. I don't... Let's see here. Can we can we zoom? There we go. Not too shabby. Dry it off. I know silver holds a little bit of a patina, but it's nothing like copper. But yeah, see that that made it look pretty cool. One troy ounce. Looks old. <laughs> Oh, that pen looks so good. All the little white stuff you see on it, that's nothing. All that is is where the uh, that baking soda, if you don't get all the baking soda off, it kind of powders up. It'll just wipe right off. It's no big deal. It, comes, it literally comes right off. And look at this guy that we've been working on. See, there's a little bit of, a, little bit of that baking soda residue on the lens or on that area. Make sure you wipe off your lens. Check that out. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun to do. It, it is it's so much fun. It's a cool project. So, of course, everybody want, is going to want to know this. Let's go ahead and grab ye old battery. Go ahead and take my gloves off. Hotter than hot out here. I'm sweating. All right. I've got battery see all of our threads on the inside are still totally fine there we go still works everything's fine just in case anybody was wondering will my flashlight work afterwards definitely just make sure that it's you know waterproof or ish oh man my allergies and you'll you'll be fine i mean it most of these flashlights especially the edc flashlights they're going to be some kind of like waterproof so you really don't have a lot to worry about whenever you're doing the, like the finishes on your edc gear you could do your flashlights your pins obviously we just did these um do all kinds of stuff yeah check that out there we go it'll just get cooler and cooler you can really do whatever type of finish you want um brillo pads work a heck of a lot faster than these scotch bright pads but i like the scotch bright pads because the brillo pads will like instantly take off the finish and will just rub right down to the copper again so if you press too hard or you rub too much in the same spot without looking you, you might have to redo it if it wasn't what you were going for with these little gentle scrub scotch bright pads you really got to put some elbow grease on it and uh, you can kind of just better watch what you're doing you're not going to accidentally over like over you know overshoot it so that's i mean that's it guys that's that's all there is to do in this so i hope you enjoyed it i hope this was informative for everybody it's a pretty pretty cool little project to do to your copper gear brass gear anything really that's like an exotic style metal uh, if you have any questions just drop me down you know drop a comment down below i'll uh, i'll answer the best i can and uh yeah we're gonna wrap it up thank you so much for stopping by checking out the channel if you enjoyed this like comment subscribe all that good stuff you know what to do catch you on the next one